This video is going to be quite a complex one, to say the least. I'm going to try and decode or deconstruct to understand the Jung and Pauli scheme, which consists of a dual aspect monism, or monism, which tries to tackle the problem of the archetypal psycho-physical relationship. Why are there, which is fundamentally, why are there archetypal patterns that go through this relationship of psyche and the physical? And through this, we can maybe get to the point of synchronicity and why there are synchronicities. So quaternity, or the quaternity archetype, is probably one of the most fundamental archetypes that exist on a universal scale, and this is of the number four. And it seems to be of a typical representation of wholeness. It seems to be from analysis that quaternity is an essential formula for a logical basis in any kind of holistic understanding or judgment about anything. For example, whether it be space-time, the four seasons, the four primary colours, the four psychological functions of thinking, feeling, sensation and intuition, Schopenhauer's fourfold principles of sufficient reason, such as being, knowing, becoming and willing, and also everyday symbolism like crosses, the square, the four elements, and of course the sacred Pythagorean symbol. Now this is obviously a profound archetype, not just because it represents the universal significance of the number four, but because its nature is of a psychic, physical relationship. And this was a later realisation for Jung. He realised, he originally understood, and treated uh, archetypal phenomena as something of purely psychic form, that the collective unconscious was specifically psyche-related and nothing more. But after working with Wolfgang Pauli, a well-renowned theoretical physicist who was only in his early 20s at the time, started to see that the unconscious, uh, Jung started to see by working with him, started to see that the unconscious encompassed the non-material being mental and material or physical aspects, which led him into the idea of the that the nature of the archetype functions as psychoid, and that due to this, the archetype as such or in of itself cannot be made conscious or cannot be presented to us through a fixed image of truth, but only through a system of relatable images through different intellectual categories. In relation to this psychophysical parallelism, Jung, through the basics of dual aspect uh, monism, conceptualized a basic reality that does not consist of parts, but is one unfragmented whole, something of an underlying reality where everything emerges and everything returns, similar to the archetypal symbol presented through imagery of the Ouroboros, but what Jung fundamentally called the Unus Mundus, meaning one world. With regards to quantum theory, the idea of quantum non-locality or quantum holism mirrors the unfragmented wholeness that is presented through the un uh, unus mundus. From this holistic, psychophysically neutral reality, decomposition is necessary of the whole to formulate the mental and material aspect dualism from the monism. Thus, what is formulated is two correlations of psychophysical relationship that entail from the symmetry breakdown of the Undus Mundus to yield the dual aspect monism, which is of central point in this entire system. Therefore, we get the collective unconscious, which relates to the mental domain, and the quantum non locality or quantum holism, which relates to the material domain. What can be said is that both of these unfragmented conceptions of the collective unconscious and quantum non-locality are comparative to the unus mundus, but through a dual aspect relating with correlates to their specific domain of either psycho or physical. This is the double aspect at play, which emerges, or more precisely decomposes from the unus mundus of monadic wholeness. Thus, the psychophysical relationship consists of both the collective unconscious through psyche and the quantum non-locality through the physical, that they are both produced by an 
epistemic uh, or knowledge related split originating from the unus mundus one world or unfragmented whole in dual aspect monism or monism according to Pauli and according to the Pauli and young scheme the mental and the material are manifestations of an underlying psychophysically neutral holistic reality called unus mundus whose symmetry must be broken to yield the dual aspects or complementary aspects. So far, the problem of psychophysical relationship has been, I guess, theoretically illustrated through this scheme, but seeing that synchronicity is also of a psychophysical relationship through a causal yet subjectively meaningful coincidence, where does it place itself within this theoretical and illustrative model? With regards to the mind-matter correlation, synchronicities occur via the following criteria. 1. A fundamental absence of causal interaction. 2. The events correspond or connect with one another by a common meaning, often expressed symbolically and free. Each pair of synchronistic event contains an internally produced and externally perceived component that relates in a meaningful manner. A diagram that expands on what is already presented would be necessary to illustrate a deeper spectrum of understanding. This would be necessary, I think, with regards to other levels of fragmented wholeness within this scheme. Uh, synchronicity, on the other hand, with it being a literal crossing over between the psychophysical relationship or mental and material domain, would, I think, resemble itself in an expanded uh, Quaternarian dynamic, uh, again meaning four, with synchronicity being represented as a by a co-incidental synthesis of the psychophysical relationship itself. Hopefully, this diagram or model, which I uh, have made, I have made helps demonstrate this. But again, as you may have noticed, this model or diagram I have theoretically illustrated is another. Quaternity archetype, which with regards to the problem at hand is an attempted holistic explanation of the psychophysical relationship between the psychoid uh, archetype. The reason why I link up the opposing peaks of synchronicity and unus mundus is because one, both synchronicity and unus mundus demonstrate the same nature or expression of the psychoid archetype which means that both, as such, cannot be epistemically or empirically understood as of now due to its nature being transcendent, in a sense, beyond space-time, number and dimension, which means it can only be understood through our visible spectrum, which represents itself through image, effect and idea. Hence why you have the Ouroboros as the image representation of the Unus Mundus <clears throat> and the principle of synchronicity as one understandable through our visible limited spectrum. This is why Jung uses the analogy of the electromagnetic spectrum to propose the dynamics of the psychoid archetype that it exists in the invisible ultraviolet spectrum but displays itself through our limited visible spectrum. And two is because synchronicity could be the complementary inversion of the unus mundus, I think. For synchronicity is the dualistic crossing over of the psychophysical relationship, which is the inversion of the monistic, unfragmented hold of the unus mundus. This theoretical observation really comes down to ontology and the philosophy of mind, because if, archetype, because if archetype plays at a level which functions through a psyche and matter relationship, through a psychoid behaviour in reality, then it must be the logical conclusion that the mental and the physical are aspects of the same substance, of a monist or monist substance. This is the theory of dual aspect monism, or double aspect theory, and the above is the Jung Pauli scheme within that model of mind and matter. This monist philosophy is one way you could 
or can answer the hard problem of consciousness. It states that there is one substance or one entity, not any dualistic understanding of machine and soul, or body and mind, or any strictly materialistic view. Therefore, consciousness and all occurrences within consciousness, like qualia, or subjective sense perception, are two different aspects or perspectives of the same thing. So, for example, one aspect of understanding consciousness would be through the scientific objective method. Uh, therefore, to try and understand emotion, they would identify neurological neurotransmitter correlations in association with the likes of dopamine, serotonin, and etc. But they would only get so far through materialism. They wouldn't actually be able to find the emotion which is being felt subjectively in of itself through the person. They would only find objective third-person correlations associated to the cause of emotion. Double aspect theory would say science is looking at this one substance, this one entity, but is analysing the entity through a particular epistemology, which would be through the third person. We can attain knowledge uh, through third person and first person uh, subjectivity. Science in this instance is therefore looking at this one substance through a particular aspect of the two dualities. And this would be uh, double aspect theory. And this overcomes this uh, uh, double aspect theory. This overcomes interactionism because if I put you in a coma and you wake up and your consciousness is not the same, it is not because your mind affects the brain or vice versa that the brain affects the mind. It is because the mind and the brain or the mental and the physical are two aspects of the same thing. And that is what dual aspect monism, or monism, however you say it, fundamentally is. That the mental and physical are two aspects of the same substance. There are many dualities in the world, uh, like the mental and the physical, but they are of the same monistic substance through this theory. Mind and matter, male, female, good, evil, hot, cold, and obviously this leads into the trinity or the triangle because you have the duality of opposites. And then the synthesis, which is the peak. In my diagram, you have a quaternity, but you could also say that it is a mirrored triangle with the two peaks pointing back to the psychoid nature resembled within Unus Mundus, the unfragmented whole, or where the transcendent archetype lies, and of course, synchronicity. But what seems symbolic with archetypal quaternities is that you have a 3 plus 1 structure in which one of the four elements are of particular significance and creates a totality together with the other three. So, to give an example, the dimension of time, together with the three dimensions of space, such as length, width, and breadth, provide the four-dimensional space-time structure of general relativity. So, if archetypes have a psychophysical relationship, we are in some way, or we are in some sense, claiming that the nature of archetypes themselves are of dual aspect monism because they have a psychophysical relationship and continue through that relationship to substantiate an objective illustration of monadic intent for a kind of a uh, emanationary manner through this dualism of matter and psyche. For example, the quaternity being an archetype that re uh, represents object objectively the structure of logical holistic form can in one manner be mentally illustrated by the fourfold existence uh, of psychological functions, or by another quaternity archetype in the physical world such as the four dimensions of space-time continuum. Another way in which ties such uh, said quaternity archetypes closely is how one of the elements within either lead into a totality or all through actualization create a, to uh, a totality itself. For example, time, the fourth dimension, totalifies, uh, totalifies 
the other three dimensions in order to formulate relativity theory, or how realization of all four mental psychological functions of thinking, feeling, sensation, and intuition lead into individuation. Synchronicity, therefore, demonstrates the nature of psychoid archetype because it is beyond our realm of understanding through its meaningful a causality. Cause, as we know it through physics, is in a constant connection with effect, but synchronicity is a highly meaningful coincidence that is not what you could say offered by the random, meaningless uh, occurrence of chance itself. Chance does not, or, or should not, allow the opportunity for a highly meaningful coincidence, if it is to be referred to as chance. For if it was the case, and that this phenomena fulfilled the criteria for synchronicity, it would not be chance as we know it. If the nature of archetype is psychoid due to its psychophysical relationship, its nature must be of dual aspect monism due to this dualistic relationship. If this is the principle of synchronicity, synchronicity must also hold the expression of psychoid behavior, for it is outside our realm of physical, dimensional, and empirical understanding. So, if you want to look into this further, I would recommend you look into the <clears throat> poorly Jung dialogues that can be found in the book Atom and, Arch uh, Atom and Archetype, or you look into the variants of dual aspect thinking itself, because David Bohm and his ideas of the implicate order is very similar so I will put links in the description that can help with the general understanding because, <clears throat> sorry about this, but this is a very difficult thing to grasp, ontology, epistemology. I don't know if I have gotten it all right in this video, and it's even especially more tricky when confronting the hard problem of consciousness, uh, let alone try and figure out theoretically why archetypes transcend through this psychophysical relationship. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't think I exactly decoded anything, but instead deconstructed the system that synchronicity sits in. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, comment and subscribe. Go over to my website and sign up to my newsletter. It would be very much appreciated. Uh, you can find all my social media links down below. Uh, with that said, I hope you have a lovely day and uh, thanks for watching.